Concola at DiscountJuicers.com and today we have another exciting episode for it's always a fun day here when I get to unbox a brand new juicer that I get to test for the very first time here on YouTube especially when there's really not any other videos reviewing this particular machine online so this is the Vivor commercial centrifugal ejection juicer Vivor is a company that imports many different products into the United States and they have an amazing website with all different kinds of products that you'll find at, honestly at the lowest prices guys and actually so this machine actually costs a little bit more than half of what the NAMA J2 juicer sells for and the NAMA J2 is my favorite juicer so I'm going to tell you guys that straight up link down below to the video 10 reasons why the NAMA J2 is my favorite juicer in the United States at this time that I use most 90% of the time when I juice. That being said, not everybody is going to appreciate my favorite juicer as a juicing expert, the number one juicing expert in the world since I have been juicing for 28 years now and I've been selling juicers online for 25 years now and this is why I have, I'm strongly opinionated about the different style juicers because I've tested all the major brand juicers that I could get my hands on and after using all of them, I like the Namit J2. That being said, the Nama J2 may not be for everybody. And for some people, you may want to consider the Vivor commercial centrifugal ejection machine. As I said, the price is solid. It has only a one-year warranty. Now, I will say that uh, Vivor is a company based in China, in my personal opinion. I do not believe they have U.S.-based customer support. I just tried to call their 800 number, and it basically went to a call center, and I asked them, does this phone number always go to the call center or can I reach somebody at Vivor? And they said, well, we always pick up. It's always a call center. So I'm kind of weary that if you will be able to get parts or service for this machine, although it does state in the instruction manual, it does have a full one year warranty on this machine. I have to comment and say the construction on this is actually beautiful. I mean, it's a, it's a well-made machine for a machine made in China. It has fairly good quality control. It is made of stainless steel and aluminum. A lot of these parts are, you know, probably thinner polished stainless steel. This top piece is definitely aluminum. And now what I will say is that the Vivor machine is a centrifugal ejection juicer. I would consider it a high-speed centrifugal ejection juicer. That being said, the Vivor is probably a much better deal in my opinion, than maybe say buying a Breville or something like that, because that's more of a home model. This is a commercial model, although it is not NSF certified. To me, this looks like, uh, honestly, a knockoff of a high-end commercial uh, juicer that maybe used to sell for around $1,000, and they basically compacted the design, made it a little bit smaller, and are actually putting out what looks to be a fairly decent machine, actually. And it, this is a, a lower-speed centrifugal ejection juicer. It does run at 2800 RPMs whereas most high-speed machines that you may buy on websites can run in excess of 10,000 or 18,000, one of the ones I tested recently on my program, RPM. So running at 2800 RPM is probably one of the slowest high-speed centrifugal ejection juicers you will find. And actually I do like the lower speeds while that may take a bit longer to juice Generally, a lower speed machine will put a little bit less oxygen into the juice and potentially get a higher yield depending on what you are specifically juicing. So while this is a, a lower speed, high speed centrifugal ejection machine, and they do not heat the juice, you know, despite many people saying online that high speed machines heat the juice, they don't heat the juice in my testing, but what they do do is they add a lot of oxygen and oxidative damage to some of the phytonutrients, the oxygen sensitive phytonutrients, non-oxygen sensitive nutrients in the juice is not readily affected. That being said, this style machine, because it does work by grating and shredding, you know, may not be effective at breaking open cell walls of certain produce items as effectively as something like the NAMA J2 juicer. The Nama J2 juicer, on the other hand, is a load and go juicer. You literally load up this hopper, you shut the lid, and literally you can walk away. Whereas this machine, you got to continually feed things in. And that is really the game-changing technology that the Nama J2 offers you guys. So you guys can have an easier time juicing, right? Sometimes if you got babies crying in the background, you can't just sit there and feed the juicer, but you can load it up, let the juicer run for, I don't know, three to five minutes, depending on what you put in there, it'll work through all that produce. You'll have a cup of juice done as you're, you know, take, taking care of your baby or doing working or doing other things in your life. I mean, do you guys 
like sit in front of your coffee maker and stare at it while it's brewing coffee? Of course not. You have the coffee maker turned on, you start your coffee up, you go do other things and you come back when your coffee is done. And that is really the revolutionary technology that the NAMA J2 offers you. In addition, this runs at 50 revolutions per minute, unlike the 2800 revolutions per minute, which based on my calculations is 56 times slower. And because it is running at a slower RPM, that generally means it'll be quieter. And in all, also it means that there'll be less air inundated or put into the juice as you make it. And in general, this style machine, because it has a single auger that basically grinds and crushes and squeezes out the juice, uh, I call it a cold press. They tend to like, it tends to grind up the produce more effectively and extract higher levels of certain nutrients out of your produce. In addition, in many instances, it may also get a higher yield. In addition, the Nama J2 has a full 15 year warranty and they have customer reservers available 24 seven around the clock, Nama. And I, I don't think that the Vivor does. That being said, you know, the, there is customer service staff located inside the United States that you can email or contact should you need assistance with the NAMA J2. The NAMA company, NAMA Well Company, has some of the highest level customer service in the juicing industry. I'm gonna say they're within the top three of customer service of all the different juicer companies that I deal with. So, you know, rest assured when you're buying the NAMA, you will be able to get customer service and warranty support for the NAMA should you have any concerns or problems with it in the future. In addition, NEMOEL is a company that specializes in kitchen products, specifically juicers at this time, whereas Vivor, they happen to sell juicers along with almost every other different kind of product under the sun based on what I'm seeing on their website. So, you know, you're gonna get a manufacturer that has literally designed this from the ground up to juice and juice quite well, whereas on the Vivor, my personal opinion is that they just go around and find the best items to sell and then sell it on their website and they didn't really have much to do with the design other than you know finding the best and sourcing the best products and making them available for you guys okay so yeah those are the difference between the companies and the general differences between the juicers and now I want to go ahead and take apart each juicer and share with you guys how they work so you guys could better understand how a centrifugal machine works and how a cold press slow juicer works all right first we'll start with a vivor so you have a pusher here now the pusher does not ref reflect the quality of the juicer this pusher seems just really cheap and plastically and thin it should at least be a solid piece it's just totally hollow and the other issue i have with the vivor is that the chute here is rather short like there are some ul standards which specify how how long this chute can be and this chute is too small because if you were to, and you should never do this, put your fingers down it, or if you have kids, don't buy this machine, and they put their fingers down this, your fingers could hit the blade. Normally this would be a little bit taller so that you know, a normal sized person's hand could not go in there and hit the blade. So that actually does concern me a lot. Could be some safety issues with that. Of course, this is just a you know inexpensive machine made in China. All right, taking this apart, there's two snaps that we just uh, snap off and it was interesting that the machine comes with one extra snap. I would probably include a different uh, parts included with the machine. Additionally, I don't know how these snaps would break um, and it is curious to me that they would include extra snaps because these snaps seem, you know, pretty solid to me. And when we pull this top off, you're going to see basically something interesting. There's holes in the top, which is interesting. I haven't seen other juicers with holes in the top because literally it's potentially that the produce could fling out the top, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I don't think they designed it like this. I wouldn't have put holes up there myself. And then this piece, while it does look like it's a stainless steel or something, this is basically cast aluminum, and it's polished on the outside. And on the inside, you can just see the uh, aluminum casting. Now, they do have a little stainless steel kind of like a cone piece here that they basically screw in, uh, which directs the pulp down out of the machine and basically the produce comes in here and sweeps around and comes out. So this looks like a fairly good design on this. Although they do say after 30 minutes of continual use, you should clean the machine out and let it rest for a period of time before you can start juicing again. So this truly is a commercial machine. Now the next part, this is the part that I'm not a big fan of, right? You really can't take out this juicing screen, which actually looks like a really nicely designed juicing screen without this little tool and they only give you one of these tools, so don't lose this tool. You could probably just use some kind of socket set to get in there, and you have to basically unscrew this little nut here. And now this, if they included any extra parts, this is the part that I think they should include extra of, 
they should include this little um, hex um, like a screw that has machine screw, a hex machine screw, because I, I bet like eight out of ten people that buy this juicer are going to lose this when they're cleaning the machine. It's going to go down the garbage disposal, something's going to happen to it, and then when you lose this piece, right, you won't be able to use your juicer because you won't be able to secure the screen down properly and using other screws may strip out the bolts and then you're going to actually ruin your juicer and I'm highly confident that Vivor probably does not stock this little piece because they just have way too many items that they're selling on their website. But once you do remove that piece you could take out this um, juicing screen and I, I have to tell you guys this is probably one of the nicest juicing screens that I've seen on any centrifugal ejection juicer. I like it for a few reasons. Number one, I mean there's just a lot of screen area which will make it more difficult to clean. I like that there's lots of holes and the holes are nice see-through. I mean it's just a really well designed and made piece, all stainless steel. So you know this machine may be the machine for you if the only criteria you have is, John, I want a machine that's all stainless steel because I don't want my food touching plastic. Well then you could surely buy this. That being said, while your, while your food will not touch plastic, you will have reduced nutrition in your food and a more aerated juice, um, you know, when using this juicer because it is a high speed machine. So once again, you have to balance out what you want. And if you want an all stainless steel machine with some aluminum on the top part, actually this is probably one of the better ones I've seen actually. I do also like that they have screws so you actually can remove this uh, cutting blade because this cutting blade over time will dull and you, and you will need to buy a spare. That being said, I don't believe Vivor sells spares of this cutting blade. So basically, this machine is potentially a one and done juicer. If you wear out the cutting blade, then the machine performance will degrade over time and you will likely not be able to buy parts. Now, I could be wrong on that. They may be stocking parts, but I don't see how they could stock parts when they have like literally thousands of items on their website. They can't stock parts for each and every item that they're selling. So, you know, keep that in mind when you guys are making a juicer purchase. If you're not going to use the juicer for that long and just not really going to be invested in juicing, then once again this might be a good machine. It could work for a good few years before you dull out that blade depending on how much you're using it and you know then basically throw it away when you're done. That being said, I don't think juicers should be used like that. But yeah, nonetheless, this is a nice design piece. Hopefully this is properly balanced uh, because it is spinning at a rather high speed like much like they balance your tires on a car. Uh, I don't. It doesn't look like to me that there's any additional weight, so they've grinded it down to uh, make it balance any more than it should. And then, of course, we have this piece here. Once again, this is another 100% stainless steel piece. Pretty nice, actually. You know, it's just well machined. You can see some like some welding marks here that they grind ground down in there. But you know what? I mean, overall, this looks like a pretty well designed piece. Stainless steel, a little bit on the thinner side, but hey, what do you expect for under $300 at the time this video is being made? Now, of course, the rest of this here, um, we got some stainless steel as well as aluminum. Uh, this top piece is basically some uh, machined aluminum, looks like to me, or cast and then polished. And then the base, once again, um, looks like some stainless steel. This is a 60 hertz, 110 volts, uh, and it's 2800 revolutions per minute, uh, 370 watts. And uh, this is a 13 kilograms is what it states. And actually, this is a nice heavy duty motor. So, you know, I'm going to have to say that this looks like a fairly good build. I'm, I'm going to have to give it a thumbs up, actually. I would much rather buy one of these than like a Breville, which I would consider more of a disposable machine. But that's just a looking at this. Hopefully it's well made and going to perform well also. To assemble this is really simple and easy. We're just going to go ahead and put this main um, body in, drop it in place. We're going to go ahead and then there's like these little holes here that we need to line up with little pins on top here. This can be a little bit challenging to like line up. And I would definitely encourage you guys to unplug this when you are assembling because this machine can turn on and you wouldn't want to flip the switch accidentally while you're, you know, assembling it, which I think could be also a safety issue. So let's go ahead. It's, oh, we got it lined up and now we got to use this little nut here to screw in. You want to screw this in tight enough so that it does not come off during juicing, but it's not too tight so that you can't get it off when you're done. So I'm just going to crank it down in there. Seems pretty tight to me. So finally we got to go ahead and take the top and there's basically some little holes here right near the latches and we got to line these up with little pins here on the top. 
Um, not the easiest to line up, but you can get it to line up if you play with it. All right, locks into place. Then we're gonna go ahead and put this down, latch it in place, and then latch on this back side. And once you've assembled it, and even if you didn't assemble it, you can't turn it on. And actually, that's a nice sounding, fairly well-balanced machine. Now, we haven't put anything into it yet, so we're just going to go ahead and turn it off, and I'm glad it's not, like, grading any parts of the machine. And, you know, that's the Vibor commercial stainless steel high-speed centrifugal ejection juicer. It definitely, when you turn it on, it smells like a house that maybe had some mothballs. Like, I've been in some relatives' house that are Chinese, and they kind of smell like the machine when I turn it on. So, over on the NAMA J2, I want to explain how this works. This works on a whole different principle. You know, while they have been making centrifugal ejection machines for, I don't know, over 50 years now, it's like really old technology in my opinion. You know, the slow style machines are relatively much newer technology than these high speed centrifugal ejection machines. And you know, they're a big advancement in juicing and especially with the hopper design, it, you know, it takes the slow juicers to the next level. So let me explain how this works. So how this works is we could go ahead and take off this whole top set and we can press this little button and then you can open up this juicer and you're going to load up this hopper with pre-cut produce. You can fill this hopper up to the line here and if you fill it up to the line depending on what you're putting in there you will be able to make 24 to 32 ounces of juice once you close the lid and turn the machine on. The juicer will work without you. Most juicers are like this where you got to keep putting items in and you know I don't want to stand in front of the juicer and keep putting items in. If you guys want to do that, you can surely do that. That is up to you. I prefer the newer technology like your coffee maker. Turn it on, walk away, come back, your coffee is made. That's how this juicer works. It's like the coffee maker of juicers. <laughs> Alright, so we could go ahead and pull this off and I want to show you guys inside there. If you guys see inside there, there's this little blade here that spins around. This little blade that spins around is the processing blade. This is the job of the processing blade inside there to basically help pre-cut things up a little bit smaller than you pre-cut it when you put it in, as well as basically help feed produce into the juicer so that you don't have to. You know, and because it's optimally designed, it feeds produce in at the speed the juicer needs, not at the speed you think you need which is a big problem with other vertical auger juicers. Other vertical auger juicers, if you feed items too fast, the machine will clog, will jam, will give you problems, and that is highly unlikely to happen on the NAMIC J2. I maybe have only ever had it clog on me once when I was really not treating it well and doing something I shouldn't have. Otherwise, it's, it's never failed me. It's a well-designed machine that literally took three years in the designing process to make before NAMIC came out with it, all right? Next parts coming out of the machine is the main parts of the juicer, including the juicer auger. Now, unlike the blades on the Vivor juicer, the auger will basically is a no non-wearing part. It will never wear out, so you don't have to like buy a new auger every five years when you wear it out if you're juicing too much like you will on the juicers with a blade because it works on a little bit different technology, whereas it just literally crushes the produce up and squeezes the juice out as the produce runs down the auger the produce is compressed in a smaller and smaller space and it like literally just grinds it up. So the auger acts upon this uh, juicing screen because the auger is inside the juicing screen and as the auger is running around, it is forcing the produce down into a smaller and smaller space and the juice is literally crushed and pressed out of it or squeezed out of it and then it comes out these holes out of the juicing screen. In addition, on the outside of the juicing screen, we have this part running around at the same time and this is basically some silicone wipers, much like the wiping wipers on your car. Imagine driving in the rain without wiping blades. And so this, these wiping blades basically help keep the screen clean to flush off the juice and funnel it and make it come out of the juicing bowl into your cup. And that's what happens in this part here. The, the, the juice comes out and then comes out this little spout. I do encourage you guys to leave the spout open when juicing. Some people like to close it to mix in the bowl. I don't prefer that technique personally. It tends to put a little bit more air into the juice as well as you may lose some juice yield because now the juice that you're making is now like, you know, swimming around in juice so you will have a little bit wetter pulp coming out. So I always leave this open while juicing and I close it when you're done. Meanwhile, on this machine, unlike the pulp flies out on that side over here, the pulp will fly, come out very slowly and trickle out this little port here which is the pulp outlet port. And this part is easy to clean unlike most other vertical slow juicers you can just flip this down and open it up so you could have easy access to clean inside here 
In addition, there's this little silicone plug that basically keeps a little bit of back pressure on the pulp to keep it inside the machine so you get it a little bit drier than you know just ejecting it out such as this machine. There's no second pressing on this. You put it in, it grinds up, some juice comes out, and then it flings out the produce. With this, it's grind and crushed, and it stays inside the machine to basically extract it and crush it and grind it a little bit more and squeeze it out a little bit more before the pulp then comes out this side. Of course, the motor base on this machine is also heavy. I'm gonna say it's not as heavy as the Vivor. It does have a rated motor at 150 watts, which is a lot more efficient. This is a Korean motor over on the NAMA and a Chinese made motor over on the Vivor. Once again, this whole machine has a one year warranty and the, the NAMA has a full 15 year warranty. So I want you guys to spend your money wisely and invest in a juicer that will literally last you for the next 15 years, provided you use it as I show in my videos. Of course, I have the white version today, but it also does come in a nicer black color if you're not good at cleaning things up and you know keeping them looking nice. Now, unlike the Vivor that you can turn on if it's not assembled properly or assembled at all, the NAMA will not turn on unless it is assembled properly. So I want to explain that to you. You guys have to you know, assemble it off the unit. If you try to assemble it on the unit, it will not assemble properly. So to assemble the NAMA J2, very simply, you're gonna go ahead and take the wiping blade, put that onto the juicing screen. You, there's these two tabs, a small one and a big one. You're gonna go ahead and drop it into the juicing bowl on the small and the big tabs. And then you're just gonna drop the auger straight in there until it locks into place. You're gonna then take the hopper, take the handle of the hopper that you can hold, and then you're gonna line up this piece here with this piece here and you're just gonna uh, put it like this and lock it into place so that this whole piece is one solid line here. This is done correctly. The handle will always be in front of the little markings on the front. If you do not assemble this part correct, the NAMA will not turn on and this is the number one complaint I get with people. John, I just got the NAMA in the mail and it doesn't turn on. I'm like, well, did you assemble it correctly? Because if you don't, it's not gonna turn on and you're gonna think we sent you a defective juicer when you know, you just got to make sure you assemble it correctly, guys. So once you put it on the unit, you can go ahead and then turn it on. And you can see it actually is running and working great. Runs at a lot slower and slower RPM of 50 revolutions per minute. So that's the function of both these two machines. The next thing I want to do for you guys is we're going to go ahead and do a sound test to see how loud each of these juicers are. All right, so I got my sound meter here, and now we're gonna go ahead and test the Vivor to hear how loud it is on the sound tester. Wow, because it runs at a lower RPM than other centrifugal ejection juicers that I've ever tested, actually 2800 is the lowest I've found for a centrifugal ejection. Normally, previously it was like 3600. It peaks out at 74 decibels, which is actually quite quiet uh, for a centrifugal ejection machine. Of course, when you start putting things in there, it will get a little louder. Let's go ahead and check out the NAMA J2. How loud is this? All right, the NAMA J2 peaks out at 64 decibels, so that's even more quiet, about 10 decibels quieter than even the Vivor running at the low and slow 2800 RPMs. So if you guys need a quiet juicer because you're juicing in the morning, because your family's asleep, or because you have thin walls in your apartment and your neighbors are always knocking on the wall, hey, shut up! <laughs> you want to get this machine because right off the bat, it is 10 decibels Quieter. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and compare and juice the same identical amounts of produce in both these machines to see which juicer will create more yield and more importantly you guys can see the whole juicing process. So now I'm all set up and ready to juice but first let's go ahead and do a weigh in. Alright let's go ahead and do a close up on the scales over on the Vivor side looks like we've got 1835 grams. And over on the Nama J2 side looks like we've got 1835 grams so backing up. Looks like we've got 1835 on both scales. We got Manolo, Tangelos, Ginger, Cucumber, and Jicama today. All right, so now that we got the weigh-in out of the way, let's go ahead and move the scales out. And today, I believe I'll be juicing in the Vivor juicer first. All right, so we will need to pre-cut some of the produce items before we put them into the Vivor. So I want to go ahead and time the entire process for you guys. The general goal when juicing is to always rotate the different items you are juicing to get the best juicer performance. 
and I think I don't even think the cucumbers will fit in this feed chute. Oh, they're gonna they're a little bit tight. They I'm probably gonna have to cut them in half. All right. So in any case, let's go ahead and get started. Turn that on and turn this machine on. And first, we could go ahead and put in half of a tangerine into the beaver. Oh, and it's spraying out at me actually. <laughs> they maybe cut this cucumber in half. Throw that in there. Throw our ginger in there. Maybe throw some more tangerine in there. And we're gonna go ahead and cut up some of that jicama to throw it in the machine. I think in order to save you guys some time, we're gonna speed this part of the video up for you guys. It looks like the V-board is done and it's taken approximately one minute and 53 seconds of juice and the V-board actually went really, um, really well actually, except for overflowing my container because I didn't think it was going to make that much juice. I will say that some of the comments about using the V-board is that we got a lot of splashing when I put the tangerines in. The, it just basically exploded with uh, liquid out of the top. We got a little bit of splashing on the table here. So let's go ahead and move this over. And I guess next we're going to go ahead and juice in the Nama J2. Juicing the Nama J2 is a little bit different because we're going to need to pre-cut some of the produce, load up the hopper, put it in, and get it going. So I guess let's go ahead and hit start on the machine. And let's go ahead and basically we can just cut up the, open the hopper, put in some of the cut up pieces of tangerines in there. I like to just take the cucumber, slice it in half, and then just slice it into little pieces. So while this will take you a little more prep time than feeding it in, you know, we may see a increase in yield in it. Um, also, I'm going to go ahead and take the jicama and chop that up into little pieces and put it in as well. I'm going to drop in our ginger and we're just going to go ahead and put in the rest of these tangerines, cut them up in little segments. I'm trying to like load all the different ingredients a little bit at a time and then that's going to basically make their juicer work a little bit more effectively. Once you have it mostly full, then you could go ahead and turn the machine on and while the machine is running you could then go ahead and prep the rest of your ingredients which is what I really love to do on the Nama J2 so we just got to go ahead and pre-cut the last bits of these items up and just let the machine work you know we could like literally leave the room at this point um, like I'll be doing in just a second because <laughs> it's likely that we will be overflowing the um, collection cup on that juicer as well so I think in order to save you guys some time, we're going to go ahead and speed this part of the video up and let the juicer juice. As you guys can see before we knew it, <laughs> this machine, the hopper is almost emptied entirely out of the produce. Let's go ahead and open the hopper and then load it up with the rest of our ingredients real quick. And we could go ahead and shut the machine and let it continue to work while we feed a few more ingredients in the, uh, the top feed chute to load it up to save a little bit more time. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and leave the room. We're gonna speed this part of the video up for you guys and see how long the Nama J2 Juicer juices without me. So the J2's about done. We had some impaled produce on the uh, processing blade there and we're gonna go ahead and hit stop here. And wow, look at that, man. That took like five minutes. So it definitely took longer in the J2 to make the juice than the Vivor. But unlike the Vivor, once you load it up, you can literally walk away and let the juicer do all the work. That being said, each of these machines have their own sets of pros and cons. So let's go ahead and turn this machine off and uh, share with you guys the results here. So always after turning the machine off, I always like to tip the machine up to basically get any residual juice out of the machine. And we'll do the same with the V-Board, it's a bit more difficult because the V-Board is actually quite heavy. Not a lot of juice left in there. All right, and now we're just gonna go ahead and bring the juices up front and center to for you guys to see how much juice each juicer made. Let's go ahead and compare the juices made on each of the juicers. Over on the V-Board, I've tried to fill it up so it's up to 1,000 milliliters of juice. And everything above that, in my opinion, is maybe like a foam layer. So basically got a thousand there plus a foam layer that's, you know, maybe in about another hundred. And then we made another, uh, like basically, I, I'm going to, I'll give it 200 milliliters of juice. So maybe like 1200 milliliters 
plus once again another foam layer. If we look at the foam layers on top, you can see they're very distinctive, basically lots of air and foam put into the juices due to the high speed action of the centrifugal style machine. Now over on the NAMA J2 side, once again I've tried to fill this up to 1000 milliliters, actually we're just a little bit under that, so let's go ahead and pour a bit more juice in there to make sure we have a fair comparison. Alright, so now we got basically a thousand milliliters of juice, and yes, we do have some foam in there, and that's maybe like, maybe a quarter as much, maybe, as the Vivor. You know, there's maybe like, maybe, I don't know, 50, I don't know, 50 milliliters of foam, so there definitely is some foam, I'm not going to say there's no foam. So we got uh, 1,000 milliliters there. Now the juice is a different color, which is quite interesting to me. Uh, maybe that's because it maybe was more effective at pulling out some of the pigments of the tangerines. I don't know. And over on the second cup here, it looks like we got um, like maybe 275, I'm going to say, milliliters of juice. Um, and once again, we have a little bit of foam layer on there. Definitely not a, as much foam on this second cup. So what did we learn? We learned that the NAMA J2 definitely made... More juice, not by much actually, by about 75 milliliters, but also made a lot less foam. And you know, yeah, so I'm going to say the Vivor performed quite well for a high speed machine. It did not make as much juice as the Nama J2, but it's pretty close actually. But let's go ahead and taste test the juice and uh, check out the pulp to see any differences. Alright, so the next thing I love to do in my tests are to taste test the juice. I think first we'll taste test the Vivor juice from this little container here. Once again, it performed quite well, made like 75 milliliters less than the Nama J2. And let's go ahead and taste test this juice. Mm. This is a nice mild recipe, guys. I encourage you guys when juicing fruits to try to balance it out with veggies. Because in my opinion, vegetables are more important to juice than the fruits. Link down below to my video on on uh, fruit juicing tips and the things that I want you guys to do when you guys juice fruits if you decide to juice them. I mean, this is a good juice, guys. Nice and smooth. It's a pretty nondescript flavor. Like, it's not super sweet. I mean, it's a decent juice. Next, let's go ahead and try the Nama J2 juice. Wow. I meant to say there's a little bit more texture. It seems a little bit more thick, if, but not like really thick, like a, like a smoothie or anything, but just a tad bit more like fiber or maybe soluble fiber in there, a little bit more better mouthfeel. And it's a little bit uh, sweeter as well. I mean, both these juices are really good. Next, I want to try the main juice, juices that, that were made, because this one's a bit more orange. Could be because the, some of the oranges of the uh, Manolo Tangelos went through first. Wow. That's good. Definitely a bit more thick. Now, this one has a lot more foam head on it. Pouring that off. Mmm. Yeah, I can really taste the difference now. So, this one's got more foam that you're tasting. And when you're tasting the juice, like, compared to this this juice, I'm going to say this juice tastes more watered down because it just didn't seem to maybe extract as much nutrition, in my personal opinion, out. And you guys could only know this if you guys taste tested the juices. And, you know, I've been making videos on YouTube for over 10 years, taste testing all kinds of juices. I mean, I'm going to tell you guys that for a high-speed machine, this probably produces one of the, the best quality juices. That being said, in my personal opinion, it's still no match for a slow-speed machine that tends to grind up and get extract more nutrition out of the juice. I think at this point, we could probably pour these guys in here since we were not going to overflow since I drank some. And next, what I want to do for you guys is actually show you guys the pulp that each machine generated. So over on the Nama side, this is the pulp we got. And over from the Vivor side, this is the pulp we got. 
I also want to check to see how the Vivor did, how much pulp is left inside the machine when we're done juicing. And as you guys can see, actually, it actually did quite a good job of evacuating all the pulp, low quality centrifugal ejection juicers. This might just be, you know, full of pulp actually. So it did quite a good job. There's a little bit of pulp still stuck on the screen here, which is actually not much. It did stay well balanced during the juicing process. So actually I'm gonna have to give this an A plus on the design overall, right? Worked quite well, I'm quite impressed actually. But let's go ahead and look at the pulps here. So both these pulps look like they're fairly broken down pretty well. But if we look a little bit more closely, you can see, you know, there'll be like pieces of cucumbers that basically didn't get ground up. You can see like the grind marks on it and it's just ejecting out like whole pieces of cucumber. So if we look at the Nama J2 pulp, it looks like it uh, definitely is juiced more uniformly and ground up every single piece. So it's more non-distinguishable than the Vivor. Let's go ahead and pick up the Vivor pulp and let's go ahead and squeeze it. As you guys can see, it's pretty much dripping with juice. It's still actually rather wet. Let's go ahead and try the same thing with the Nama J2 pulp. If we squeeze this pulp, I mean, yes, we can squeeze some juice out of it, but it's significantly more dry than the Vivor pulp. So actually, let's go ahead and try this. Let's go ahead and try to put the Vivor pulp back into the Nama J2 to see if we can get it to press out even more juice to show the inefficiency of the Vivor high-speed juicer. We're gonna go ahead and let that process while I leave the room and let the machine do all the work. All right, so it looks like the Nama was successful at pressing out the pulp from the Vivor juicer that we previously um, put in there. Let's go ahead and turn that off and I always like to tip this up. See if we got any last bits of juice out. And I want to show you guys two things. I want to show you guys how much more juice was made, which is approximately um, 225 more milliliters of juice, which is almost a full cup of juice extra. And now I want to go ahead and show you guys actually how the Nama J2 basically wrung out the Vivor pulp to make it even more dry and what it looks like now. So look at that now, guys, that's insane. The mass of this pulp is just a lot less because we literally pressed out the, the juice that was left in it. I mean, this is completely ground up and ground down, pretty much non-distinguishable. You can't see any big pieces of cucumber, and we squeeze this. I mean, I'm squeezing pulp. I don't even see any drips of juice come out, right? That is really the efficiency of the Nama J2 juicer. Now, of course, if we put the Nama J2 pulp back in the Nama J2, it would likely squeeze out a little bit more juice, but definitely not 225 milliliters worth because the pulp was already drier to begin with. Not every time you put the pulp back through the Nama will it always squeeze out. It depends on what you specifically juiced. Some items will feed through rather easily like it did today and some items may just get stuck feeding around and not dropping into the feed chute. I'll have videos on this in the future how you can basically pre-cut some jicama cubes and put it back in with your pulp to rejuice the pulp if you'd like to get a higher yield out of your previously juiced pulp. So yeah, that is the amazing thing about the Nama J2. It could take another juicer's inefficiencies and turn it into more juice. Now we're gonna go ahead and taste test this juice. Mmm, that's the best juice of them all. I'm really tasting the ginger in that one actually because probably the, the ginger got uh, flung out mostly whole without a lot of juice being extracted because High speed machines are not super effective at juicing ginger. And it's a lot more thick, guys. Like, I really love the texture of this. It reminds me of like a guava nectar I used to have as a kid. You know, so that's pretty much it for this demo today. And what I'm gonna say is this, right? The winner of this demo for me is hands down, clearly the winner is the Nama J2. It runs at 50 RPMs, produces a higher quality juice, with less foam, less oxidative damage, more nutrition in there for you. It's gonna basically make a higher yield and save you guys money in the long run because when you use a high speed machine such as the Vivor, right, there's extra juice still left in the produce that you could have pressed out with the Nama J2. Also, unlike the Vivor high speed machine, I am a fan of the low speed machines because of the benefits in the extraction process of extracting more nutrients in general, 
Also, it is quieter and more importantly, it has a full 15 year warranty, whereas a Vivor, Vivor only has a one year warranty. That being said, we'll, uh, we'll also tell you guys if you guys are looking for a high speed centrifugal ejection machine that's all stainless steel, you know, the Vivor performed probably as one of the best high speed centrifugal ejection machines I've ever used, right? It runs the lowest RPM of 2800 RPMs. And for this style juicer, if you want a high speed machine, this is the one to buy, guys. That being said, between these two, if I'd only pick one, I would get the NEMA just because of the longer warranty and you're gonna make a higher quality use and save more money. But if you need a high speed machine, this is the one to get. If you don't, this is not NSF, so if you have a commercial juice bar, you may be able to use this in your juice bar to juice things like carrots, which it's probably gonna do a really good job at. Even juicing apples, like the low RPM really kicks some butt. Does a great job, and whether you guys want to buy the Nama J2 or the Vivor, I'm going to hook you guys up with some discounts here because that is my company name, Discount Users. I always get you guys the best discount available. If you guys want to buy the Nama J2, you guys can use a coupon code LOWSPEED. I'll throw it up right there, LOWSPEED, L-O-W-S-P-E-D-D, at namawell.com to save 10% off your purchase of the NAMA J2 juicer to get it at the lowest price. Meanwhile, if you guys want to buy the Vivor commercial centrifugal ejection juicer, I'm going to throw out the coupon code right there also for you guys that you guys could use at the Vivor website. I'll put links down below pinned as the first comment in the description as well as it, as in the description for the discounts, 5% on the Vivor or 10% on the NAMA J2 to ensure you guys get the lowest prices on the juicers that I review for you guys. Hopefully you guys appreciate my videos and this video has helped you out so that you guys could more clearly see which juicer may be better for you. And if I have helped you out, hey, do me a favor, help me out to use the links and the coupon codes. Not only will you save some money off the juicers, but the companies will also share with me a small commission so that I can continue to make my impartial reviews for you guys so you guys could learn the best juicers in the world for you after watching all my videos. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and share this with other people that are looking for a commercial juicer or maybe even just a high quality juicer that's going to make more juice for you. Your help is greatly appreciated. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out my new and upcoming episodes I've come out about every five to seven days. You never know where I show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to check out past episodes. Our past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to teach you guys all about the different kinds of juicers available on the market today so that you guys can select the right one. I'll put links down below to some of the videos I made in the past with the NAMA J2, especially the one why it is my favorite juicer, as well as videos showing how it juices fruits, how it juices roots, how it juices leafy greens. It basically is a jack of all trade juicers and that's the one I'd recommend for the majority of the people out there unless you have special needs. And if you have special needs, be sure to check my other videos uh, where I go over you know the differences and pros and cons between these machines. You might want to check out a video, Best 3 Juicers of 2022, where I compare the NAMA to the Santa 727 and the DynaPro Vacuum Blender with Alexa's Nutmo Bag, which are the best juicing technologies on the planet, at, in my opinion, at this time. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.